The urea cycle. Excellent topic for today. Uh, let's talk about the urea cycle. Let's talk about the basics first. I like to start simple and then work to more complex. Uh, so the basics. Our goal of the urea cycle is to get rid of nitrogen. So in the form of NH, we don't like nitrogen in the body. Uh, and then also our, our end product is going to be excreted in the urine. So your urine is full of nitrogen formed in the form of urea. So this nitrogen, we're going to get rid of it in the form of urea that will go into your urine. So that's, that's the very, very basics. Now let's kind of uh, expand. So there's a lot of fun biochemistry involved here, uh, but the very first step is going to be the most important. I guess the second step in how I'm presenting it. Uh, so you'll have a glutamate and that'll eventually get converted into an alpha ketoglutarate, alpha ketoglutarate. In the process, it'll give off an NH4, an NH4, so our nitrogen, our nitrogen form. So this is how we get a nitrogen. So we're gonna take that NH4 and combine it with CO2. Where do we get CO2? Uh, the TCA cycle, we spit out two two CO2s every time we spin that TCA cycle. So we have plenty of CO2 to get rid of. We have our nitrogen that's formed by an amino acid breaking down. It's giving up uh, its nitrogen group. These two will go together to form a molecule. And this is gonna be, like I said, this is gonna be the rate limiting step of the urea cycle, the most important step. So it's gonna form a carbamoyl phosphate. Carbamoyl phosphate. So this is the rate limiting step of the urea cycle and the enzyme that's going to be required is phos uh, carbamoyl phosphate synthetase 1. So I'll move out of the way in just a second. Super important enzyme. If you were to remember no other enzyme that I'm about to teach you today, I would put this one in your memory bank. If, if you learned this and forgot all the other enzymes, I would be happy. Your teachers might not be happy, however, I would be happy because this is the number one. We're taking a free nitrogen and a free carbon dioxide, forming it into a carbamoyl phosphate. This is one of our forms of nitrogen. However, I'm going to tell you that urea is made up of two nitrogens. You have two nitrogens. So our goal is to figure out where this other nitrogen is going to come from. And to do that, we're going to have to go through the urea cycle. So the urea cycle, where else did we hear cycle? The TCA cycle. Cycle, we're talking circles. And just like the TCA cycle, uh, my, my writing and convention says you go in a clockwise fashion. So just like the TCA cycle, where you comb combine acetyl-CoA and OAA, we're going to take carbamoyl phosphate and add that with ornithine. So we're going to take ornithine. We're going to take that ornithine. We're going to take that carbamoyl phosphate. We're going to draw a couple arrows that show that they go together. And then we're going to make a new molecule of citrulline. Citrulline. All right, so we've got our citrulline. Uh, what enzyme is going to, to make this citrulline? Well, it's going to be ornithine transcarbamylase. Okay, my spelling's not the best, but that's the gist of it. So, so we have a molecule of citrulline. Citrulline is going to combine with another molecule now. So, we're going to take a molecule of aspartate, aspartic acid, and combine it with citrulline. This is going to be uh, moderated by the enzyme arginosuccinate synthetase. Uh, 
I'm just going to write a few things and then I'll move. Arjuna succinate synthetase. Arjuna succinate synthetase is going to create a molecule of arginose succinate. All right. So one thing I also want to point out, because this is a very testable question, is where does this other nitrogen come from? It's going to come from our aspartate. And we're able to generate more aspartate. And I'll show you how in just a little bit. Right now, I do want to continue on with the urea cycle, however. So this arginosuccinate is what we're left with now. Uh, we've got an arginosuccinase enzyme. A-S-E ending, arginosuccinase uh, enzyme. That's going to turn that arginosuccinate into an arginine. So, so now we're left with a molecule of arginine. In this process, we're going to turn this arginosuccinate into an arginine and a fumarate molecule. This fumarate molecule will eventually make its way through a series of reactions to aspartate, and that'll be reused. So that's, that's kind of important to remember. Um, I will cover that near the end. Uh, again, I do want to get through this cycle. And then finally, this arginine is going to make its way back to ornithine. So where does urea come into play, you may be asking? Well, urea is going to leave at this point. Uh, I do want to draw the molecule of urea. Just simply, not, not that you need to know it, it's just simply so you can understand what it is. So you're going to have an NH3 carbon, NH3 double bonded to oxygen. So that is uh, NH2, my apology. I just violated some chemistry laws there. Not that it matters. You have two nitrogen groups. You've got one nitrogen group coming from here, which was the breakdown of a glutamate into an alpha ketoglutarate. And then also you've got this other nitrogen group. Uh, you've got this other nitrogen group coming from the aspartate. And I'll show you how we're going to get uh, some of that aspartate. But otherwise, note that this molecule has two nitrogens attached to it. Urea has two nitrogens. And then this will eventually make its way to the kidney. Um, so while I'm talking here, uh, this step, the conversion of carbon dioxide in the nitrogen form into a carbon oil phosphate, is going to be found in the liver, specifically in the mitochondria. So the mitochondria of the liver. While the rest of the urea cycle is going to still occur in the liver, so it'll be in the liver but everything from here on is going to be in the cytoplasm. The cytoplasm of liver cells. All right, so we've completed our cycle. Once we've created the arginine, it'll split into a urea and an ornithine. The ornithine will combine with more carbon oil phosphate um, and continue the cycle. So now we can move over. I'm going to turn the camera. So now we can move over and figure out how we're going to regenerate this aspartate from fumarate. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn to our old buddy, the TCA cycle. The urea cycle loves the TCA cycle. So why do I say that? Well, I'm going to turn you back. Up here, we created this amino group by taking a glutamate and turning it into an alpha ketoglutarate. That alpha ketoglutarate is part of our TCA cycle. So we can feed that alpha ketoglutarate if we choose into the TCA cycle. However, I'm going to turn you back. You may also recognize that fumarate is part of the TCA cycle. It's near, it's near the kind of like bottom spoke of the TCA cycle. So this is going to turn into a malate via TCA enzymes which is going to turn into an oxaloacetate, an OAA, oxaloacetate. And that oxaloacetate is going to, to convert via a transaminase 
into an Aspar cake. So, trans, transaminase. So we're taking that amino molecule and we're, and we're rearranging it, we're transforming it. And specifically, it's going to be an aspartate transaminase. That's going to be so aspartate, also known as AST. When you get your liver enzyme panel, you'll see an AST and an ALT. The AST is going to be your aspartate transaminase, so liver enzymes. Okay, so the, the AST is going to convert our OAA into aspartate. Uh, one thing I do want to point out that I forgot back here, now that I'm talking about reactions, is we're going to require two ATP to form this carbon oil phosphate. There's no phosphate in these molecules, so it would make sense that somewhere you get phosphate from, you're going to get it from the two ATP molecules, so you'll have two ADP molecules. I was, I was looking at that, it didn't look great. So, Carbon oil phosphate, yeah, yeah. You have to get phosphate from somewhere. It's in the form of two ATP molecules. All right, but let's talk, let's go back to our OAA into aspartate. Uh, you simply can't just convert OAA into aspartate. This has the nitrogens. We're getting rid of two of those nitrogens. You gotta get nitrogen back into the system somehow. And that's gonna be by the breakdown of glutamate, back into alpha ketoglutarate. Alpha ketoglutarate was a TCA cycle intermediate. So we have all of these TCA cycle intermediates that we're dealing with. Um, that's why the urea cycle and the uh, TCA cycle, Krebs cycle, are so intimately connected. But we are, here we go. This glutamate is giving up one of its nitrogens, which will eventually form a urea. This glutamate will turn into alpha ketoglutarate, and in the meantime, it gets now converted into an aspartate, and there you go, and the cycle can repeat. This aspartate is where we get our second uh, nitrogen group beyond the first one. Uh, I think that's all I want to cover. Uh, if you have any questions, be sure to ask. This is, this is the, the hard basics of biochemistry of the urea cycle. Um, my apologies for not catching that ATP quicker. Uh, just remember, phosphate is in the name. you got to have phosphate come from somewhere. Uh, let me pan it back over. If you have any questions, be sure to ask. Otherwise, if you enjoyed this video, if you learned anything, please click like, subscribe for more great videos, and I always enjoy getting your comments. So thank you, YouTube.